Paul, great to see you, brother. You too, Simon. Uh, I just thought we uh, we might record a bit of a conversation with one another, just uh, encouraging the brothers and sisters out there about how we're crushing lockdown life, uh, thriving, and uh, just li living our best selves at the moment. Uh, I thought other people would be really happy to hear that kind of stuff. Uh, encouraging. So Would that be encouraging? Yeah. Why don't you go first? <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. Um, Simon and I went, went for a walk this morning and I said to him, oh, brother, I hit the wall this week. <laughs> I just, um, uh, I, particularly yesterday, I had a really lousy day. Interestingly, yesterday was the first time in my calendar in about three or four weeks that I haven't had wall-to-wall -wall meetings. And I stopped after the lectures yesterday morning, a couple of phone calls I had to make at about 11 o'clock. And it felt like I spent the whole rest of the day staring off in the space. I got some bits and pieces done, but oh man, uh, shattered. Yeah. And how about it, you, Simon? Well, as soon as the pressure comes off, it's like that. I mean, I had, uh, I had three actually really good productive days uh, and that was great. Uh, but that's almost a fortnight ago now. Um, <laughs> I'm still still living on the memory of them. Uh, <laughs> it smells good though, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. I mean, this yeah. is the reality, isn't it? That um, it, it is, brother. But like, uh, one of the interesting things for me, like we've we've chatted a little bit about this. Um, kind of what we're going through is a bit like reverse culture shock, right? Mm, yeah. Like absolutely. in a sense, we're experiencing what most missionaries experience coming back from the field. Why is that? Tell me a bit about what's going on there. Yeah, there, well, there's this gap between what we expect the world to be like, what we, our expectations of the world and our lived reality. Uh, and it's as if we've been dropped into a different world. And uh, just the, the limitations that come on because of lockdown, the things that we can't do, the people we can't see, uh, all, all of those things are disappointments. Uh, they're griefs. And we have a grief that the life we expect to be living, we can't live at the moment. Uh, and all kinds of expectations that we have on ourselves and on others are being disappointed. So there's just layers and layers of grief. Um, and on top of that, people have got other kinds of griefs going on as well. Yeah. And that, that just makes life really complicated. Um, and I, I think the technical word for, um, uh, for what we're feeling is kind of just blah. It's just, oh, it's a groan. That, that's the word that best captures the time, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But like you, I, I've heard you talk about this before, but like what are the symptoms of that? So there's grief, there's lots of change happening. There's this mm. weird thing where we're in the world that we're all used to, but it's not the world that we're used to at the same time. Yeah. What are some of the symptoms? Like what are the impacts of that for people who are crossing cultures? Like what do you find yourself doing? Yeah. Well, there, there's a few big ones. So one of the big ones is just exhaustion. Uh, so you find yourself looking back on the day thinking, I've done nothing, but I'm absolutely stonkered. And I, I haven't got any more energy. Why has all of this taken so much more energy? But that's the reality is that the more we live having to make little adjustments all the time, that's just exhausting. Uh, so part of what we're going to deal with at the moment is uh, this is not going to be a quick emergency that you just kind of suck it up for a couple of days and get through. But we've got now this chronic exhaustion that's going on. And we need to recognise that actually life just takes more energy. Everything takes a little bit more thought uh, and more energy than it used to. And even when you put all that energy in, the other thing that goes with exhaustion is you're just less productive. So even with all of your best efforts, you can't do things at the same level, at the same intensity, with the same accuracy, um, with the same productivity mm. that you used to. And so they're, they're two really big expectations that we've got to make adjustments for. Uh, otherwise, uh, we're exhausted, we're not achieving, and now we're down on ourselves for being tired and not achieving, and you, you can really quickly get through a vicious cycle there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting you say that. I've talked to a few students in the last week who are saying they're just feeling really disappointed with themselves. Like last semester, they were getting prepared and doing some reading for lectures and et cetera, et cetera. And this semester, they feel like they go to class and they try to get their assignments done. And even that almost feels like it's beyond them. So yeah. 
but you're saying that's just that's part of life at the moment. Yeah, and I, I think one of the really big <clears throat> life skills that we're going to learn through this is about being able to adjust our expectations uh, so that we're not down on ourselves uh, when really we ought to be giving ourselves a break. Um, but then there's a flip side, isn't it? We were talking about this earlier this morning as well, that if you just say, oh, that's it, I give up, uh, or I'm going to do nothing, actually, that ends up feeling even worse. So having markers in the ground, having some things that you say, well, realistically, I could get this bit done, and having the sense of accomplishment from actually having done that, mm. uh, having a timetable where there are some pegs in the ground where, you know, I, I think if, you, if you're getting out of bed, you're getting dressed, you're turning up, there's a good start. <laughs> um, uh, if you can't manage all three of those and you, you're kind of starting while you're still in bed, that's, that's going to grow old very quickly. And, um, and in the end, that you, you end up in a spiral that's very difficult to get yeah, out of. Routine really matters, doesn't it? E even for people going through grief. Um, uh, it's a long time ago now. My, my father-in-law passed away um, what, you know, almost two decades ago. Mm. Um, but I remember watching uh, one of the things that my mother-in-law worked really hard at after he passed was just having little routines in her life, trying to stop her from just giving in to the, giving into the grief completely, mm. having things that she had to do, like going to the shops, getting stuff done or what, you know, whatever it was, she, she put some stuff in place in her life. Yeah. Uh, and, and there is something about that perseverance thing, isn't there, in terms of the big scheme of things, I think. Um, I, I deeply remember uh, when I was struggling with, in burnout, um, meeting a senior evangelical figure from somewhere else in Australia who will go unnamed, um, but who in God's kindness, I just had a, a conversation with him. I said, look, I'm really struggling. And I, I actually knew that he had some, some history with depression and other things as well. At one stage, I said to him, you know, how do you keep going? And he just turned to me and said, sheer bloody mindedness, um, which was completely out of character to him. <laughs> and, and, um, but uh, over the years, as I've reflected on that, I've just realised what he's saying is you've just kind of got to be stubborn enough to keep putting one foot <laughs> in front of another, um, not necessarily expecting you're going to knock the ball out of the park, but you've got to keep doing life and serving people and finding little ways of motivating yourself to take that next step. So... Yeah, yeah. I now think you, that's so you told me this great story about your mum too this morning. Yeah, see, uh, the fellow that uh, you were talking about and my mum are of the same generation and not of our generation. Yeah. And I, I think one of the things that we may actually gain out of this uh, is a, uh, a new appreciation for perseverance, for that just sticking at it and pushing through. Um, I was telling Paul, my mum told me a story a little while ago about when she was... Uh, she was a kid at school, I think uh, late primary school. She was riding a bike home from school uh, in England in the snow, comes a cropper off the bike, um, skids on the road and skins herself. And she's just lying on the frozen road crying. And uh, as she told the story, she said, I just had this moment of realisation. I looked around and I thought, nobody's listening. <laughs> no, what's the point of lying here crying? Nobody's even paying attention. So she said, I got up, I dusted myself off, I rode the bike home. And she has lived the last more than 70 years in pretty much that kind of framework. Uh, and there is a point at which you've you just got to pick yourself up, dust yourself off and get on with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's a trick, isn't it? That kind of managing expectations at the same time as kind of not letting yourself go. Yeah. And I think, I don't know about you, so I, I, I think it's little habits, isn't it? It's little routines. It's having kind of achievable goals, but being kind of sensible about that and realising that you're not going to, you know, you're probably not going to write your magnum opus in the next three weeks or, uh, <laughs> or change right. the world, quite frankly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. But I think you're right. The little habits make a big difference. And I think there's some that make a bigger difference than others. So one of yep. the little habits is um, habits of gratitude. So in the midst of this, as our worlds are kind of closing in around us a bit, and or not a bit, uh, quite a lot, you're in the house the whole time, you, you, know, you get your one walk a day or whatever it is, um, it's easy for us to, to draw all of our attention in on ourselves. 
and to feel miserable for ourselves yeah. and for that to become a self-perpetuating thing. So habits of thankfulness um, uh, might be as simple as the old kind of counting your blessings thing and just, just actually recounting, gee, even in the midst of this, my house is warm and I still have plenty of food and there are people who love me and just counting our blessings in that kind of way. Yeah. Um, but of course, theologically, to think in the midst of all of this, that uh, not only has the Lord Jesus come to save me, but I have an incredible hope of heaven as well. So as a Christian, I, I can have both um, a habit of gratitude, which is so important, but also a hope for a life beyond this that doesn't keep me locked in that sense. And I, so I think those things are true of coping with culture shock, of coping with grief, and of just getting through life. But habits yeah. maybe that are more important now than we've realised yeah. for a while. Yeah, no, absolutely. And even just stopping at the end of the day, right, and just giving thanks, even if it's mm. after the meal, not just for the meal, but for the day. Um, we've been trying to go around our table occasionally with our boys and whatever and say, what's something you're thankful for today? Yep. <laughs> uh, just as a way of trying to kind of think through that, it's been um, really helpful. That's a great family habit. Yeah, yeah. Um, what other things have you found helpful, Paul, for, for, for just in that persevering piece? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do think routines really matter. I've been trying to still get out of bed at the same time in the morning. So about 6.30 is my normal waking up time and try to be pretty disciplined at getting up at 6.30 every morning and I try to go for a walk before the day starts. That just helps to kick my body into gear and gives me something to kind of do and get going. So, you know, I've been trying to just those routines. We've been trying to stop in the household and uh, eat meals together and, and try to make some fun times around kind of doing that together. Um, kathy has been working really hard at getting us to do family fun, which my uh, older boys um, sometimes find fun and sometimes less fun. But we did we did find ourselves uh, with the old we out playing Just Dance the other, uh, other evening. Uh, that was a hoot. I bet you were great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, well, yeah, my wife took a, photo, a video of us to send to my daughter who doesn't live with us anymore. And I looked at myself and I just thought that's utterly tragic. But anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, it's good to laugh. Uh, now, brother, we, um, the other thing that I've been thinking of too, just on the flip side of that, some of the temptations for us, I guess, and some of the dangers for us at the moment. I know that for me, um, finding my frustration levels growing um, and I think for me, anger kind of leaps up at that point in time. Yeah. Um, I've been pondering, in God's kindness, I had to um, speak a bit uh, uh, to some men last weekend about kind of being godly. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been pondering that verse in 1 Timothy 2, 8 about men lifting up holy hands in prayer mm -hmm. uh, and not in anger or disputing. And it just made me kind of reflect on, uh, you know, it's so easy for us. I think particularly folks, I think for everybody at the moment, mm. um, one of my go-to places in my frustrations is just get, I get grumpy and <laughs> cross and, yeah. uh, you know, uh, yeah, how are you doing with coping with your anger? Yeah, well, the grumpiness thing is um, that's, yeah, that's probably closer to what, it, what my real battle is. It's just um, uh, the disappointment and grief bubbling up in just being grumpy. But the, the trouble is in lockdown. Uh, so there's Margie and me in the house. And that's it. So if I'm grumpy... And it's hard to be grumpy with you, isn't it, Simon? That's right. I'm pretty happy with me. So she gets 100% of my attention. And that's just so unfair, isn't it? So I think there's uh, there are new temptations in this season, and that's uh, we need to recognise that. But the other dynamic is we've got so many fewer outlets yeah. Uh, and so we can end up being really harsh with the people who not only don't deserve it, and, uh, that we love the most, um, but they're just the only ones who are there. Yeah. Uh, and so one of the things I've been reflecting, we've been doing this uh, marriage course here at, um, with students at college, um, is that if things are good and you lock down together, that's oh, great. <laughs> and as soon as things go yeah. bad and you lock down together, well, that... That gets really bad, really bad. It's tough because there's nowhere to go, is there? That's it. It's, it's very hard to find space that we need from each other in order to 
get hold yeah. of ourselves and think a bit more carefully about the situation and come back in a, in a, in a space of grace rather than just um yeah, yeah. I mean, so I, I think I'd, I'm, re I'm just really keen, like, if, if you feel like you're struggling to be in that space or whatever, just to say, reach out to somebody else, find someone that you trust, friend, yeah. you know, neighbour, whatever, to find someone to talk to. Yeah. So I think one of the important things about marriage is to work out that there's no other single person who can meet all of my needs, all of my emotional needs, all of my relational needs. So now that I'm locked down with just one or a few other people, um, I've actually got to work harder to see some of those needs met in other ways. And I don't know what you've found. Uh, here we are recording a Zoom conversation. You know, it's, it's just exactly what I wanted to be doing on a Friday. Um, no, very happy to be doing it. Uh, but, but this way of relating is really difficult and intense, isn't it? Um, so I've found, uh, I've found doing phone calls, uh, the old fashioned phone, and doing it while I'm uh, having a walk around so that it's just a less intense way of operating yeah. has been a really helpful thing for me. Uh, have you found other ways of kind of breaking out of the bubble uh, while still complying? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I have tried to do some walks with people, so that's kind of worked with some people. Well, it depends where it falls in my day and my diary as to whether I feel like I can do it and get back and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but definitely uh, those things. It's interesting. I think I've actually written emails that look different to the ones that I normally write as well yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Just maybe sharing a bit more news or trying to do something at a kind of, you know what I mean? Just share a bit more about life rather than just have it kind of being functional. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It's funny because I grew up letter writing. Um, uh, I, Kathy and I dated from the time we were in year eight at high school and we used to spend most summers apart because... Uh, my family moved away and whatever. So, um, you know, we used to write these copious, these ridiculously long handwritten things. You've got some skills to fall back on, mate. Yeah, that's right. We don't exist anymore. But it just, it's interesting. I remember Kathy's dad. Um, Kathy's dad spent a kind of one, a month away uh, in the US when she was in her mid-teenage years. And she said he wrote letters back to them. And they learned things about him that they'd never known from living here with him all that time because there's just something about that mode of communication that changes the habit. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know what you do with that. but yeah. I, I've taken on a couple of other little coping strategies as well. So uh, I'm off social media at the moment. Uh, yeah. And the only exception to that is that I'm, I'm actually working harder at keeping up with my African friends. Uh, and that, that helps me in a number of ways to break out of my bubble. So I was finding... Um, uh, the Facebook in particular was just stressing me out and, uh, and not helping me with my grumpiness of the world, just reflecting on everybody else's grumpiness. Um, I've limited the amount of news that I'm looking at uh, yeah. because what's really changed, frankly, <laughs> um, you know, the, the, the news is just same, same. Uh, and I, I'm getting really tired with news that seems to continually go for outrage yeah. and so uh yeah uh, the sad thing is i find it works so it provokes outrage in me and that's not actually helping anybody anyway yeah um so i've limited that the contact with my friends from overseas has been really um helpful a real blessing um because uh it helps me to count my blessings here uh, i think my, my friends in namibia we've had a number of my former students and colleagues in Namibia have died of COVID uh, in the last few months. Um, and uh, when I think I'm living in lockdown, uh, yeah, sort of, but if you're living a subsistence um, farming life and you're living in lockdown, if you haven't grown it, you're not eating it. Uh, and so with no trading in markets and things, life is very bleak uh, for people in many parts of the world at the moment. Um, that they have to pay 70 US dollars to get a COVID test. Uh, I have to walk 100 metres for a free one. Uh, so um, those things have helped me uh, just to lift my eyes beyond what's going on around me. And I've found that's been a blessing. Um, it's amazing how those guys throw me back on the word of God as well. So they will quote scriptures back to me. I go, oh, yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, maybe we all need a few other Africans in our life, brother. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is a real blessing to, uh, and it doesn't matter. I mean, 
our, our friends in Europe have, have struggled far more than us, our friends in the US. In fact, well, yeah, yeah, the missionaries that I know in South America as well. I mean, that's been a, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, perhaps that's one of the blessings of having brothers and sisters all over the world. Yeah. Um, they are there, and maybe now's a good time to, to tap into those relationships for our own good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. Simon, thanks. Uh, it's been a really encouraging conversation, brother. Good on you, Paul. It, uh, it might even encourage some other people, but even if it doesn't, it's worked for you and me, so that's all right. Hey? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. I'm wondering if um, it'd be good to pray as we finish. Um, I think as we finish, just one last thought. I, I'm keen to encourage people too, just to think about the balance between study and family life going on at the moment. I don't know if you're trying to maintain a pattern that looked like it was pre-COVID, um, but I just want to think of, you know, if you, particularly for those of you with young kids in the house and you, your wife's going nuts and all that kind of stuff, um, just reducing your expectations and being present with them at the moment, I just think that's really important as well. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, if you're worried that you're missing out on content and that's going to somehow uh, lead you to be less well equipped for ministry, I think honestly, if you love your family, love the people who are around you well, uh, and cope well with adjusting to life now, yeah. to be really well prepared for ministry. And then we'll pick up the content another day. Shall we pray? Please, mate. Yeah. Oh, Father God, thanks so much uh, for your grace to us in Jesus. Thank you for fellowship in him. Mm. Thank you, Father, that actually, even as we live uh, through this lockdown and the complete uh, turning upturning of our lives, um, Lord, that there are very deep promises in your word uh, and a very rich hope that belongs to us in Christ. Um, Father, help us, please, as Simon has encouraged us, to be people of thanksgiving. Help us to remember each day your graciousness that our sins could be forgiven. Uh, Father, help us to see in, even in the little things that we have your hand and learn to give thanks because you are good. And Father, will you please protect us, give us patience and self-control in loving our families and those around about us well. And Father, please, uh, we do long for this to end, uh, but we pray, please, that you would give us patient perseverance in the midst of it. And Father, the opportunities to live and speak for Christ, nevertheless. Father, will you, particularly in our community where many are hurting and unsettled, will you bring openings for the gospel of Jesus so that people hear of Christ and find life in him through this. And Father, we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.